uh, Guadalcanal and all those places, you know, um, the moments of D-Day, it, it's very dark information for them to relive. So I got as much information as I can from people in Vietnam, read as many books as I could, and went there with it, with the concept that it was just a business. I was just there to make money and do what I had to do, and I had great respect for this night, for this you know, dark knight who technically would go out and kill Viet Cong while everybody else was sleeping and would come back with several bodies. And that was the image I had in my head of Rambo, a great respect. And when I left him there in the rice paddies, I didn't want to do that. But I had to, because those were the orders, and business is business. I'm a mercenary. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a missionary. So I was able to keep it as business-like as I could, and he had the soul. He was the lead, he had the soul. We tried to do, <clears throat> he and I, when he went back, went back <clears throat> to cast, I think, Rocky Three. we put some pages in there, in the script, and I remember I put it in George Cosmatos, the director's script, and I put it in the AD script, and he and I wrote some pages. And it was all about, it was a monologue that I give about our association back in the Army, and how he would go out at night and kill Vietnam, Viet Cong, and come back and all. And I was on the set and I said, are we going to shoot this scene now, George? And he looked at the script and he didn't remember this scene. <laughs> and slide, slide left, and he says, get it done, get them to shoot that. It's a great backstory. <laughs> and, and, and the AD looked at his script and he had it, but they didn't remember from having production meetings, they didn't remember having this scene. <laughs> and and I, it was just a scene that I'm in the cockpit of the, of the chopper, and I'm going to be talking to the mirror, and I would give all this page of dialogue. And he says, Cove, I know what you did. He says, you and Sly want to put this in, this, in the movie. He says, you're fired. <laughs> you know. And I called Sly in the, in, back in L.A., and I got him rehired again. But we tried, <laughs> <laughs> we tried to get backstory in to create exactly what you're asking, to create a, a, a sense of what it was like in Vietnam and why this was all happening to Rambo and basically, you know, just, he was only supposed to take photographs, that's it. And he wasn't supposed to find the POWs. And it was a business, just a business, covert business. So we, we had a good time doing that. It was, a, it was a good shoot, tense shoot, but a good shoot. And I followed it up, you know, because I followed Karate Kid up with something that I thought would make a lot of money and it did. On the set is, and that movie was tense. Everybody would have to come at the same time. Everybody would be driven to the set at the same time, whether you worked at 4 o'clock, 2 o'clock, everybody was on that set. That was just the way he wanted it, because Sylvester had directed the movie a lot more than the director himself. And uh, it was Sly's movie. And it was a tense set. It was a tense set. Off, it was great. Off, you know, we went out. Once a week we'd go out because we were all very tired and we're in the jungle every day, all day. And um, we had a wonderful time off and very relaxed. And he and I had done two movies together before. And we had done Capone, we'd done Gazzara, just right here outside this building. And we had done Death Race 2000. Uh -huh. And uh, we knew each other well, you know. And we'd go out and party. But during the work week, six days a week, it was business. It was really know your lines and get on that set and do it. And it's, we can shoot it five ways if you know what you're doing. So preparation comes back into the picture again. You know, some sets are real loose all the time. You know, uh, I remember doing Wyatt Earp. And it was very loose. Kevin Costner and Larry Kaz in directing. Mm -hmm. Larry, most directors don't like you to come see dailies. The footage shot the day before, but Larry Kasdan would bring everybody in, have popcorn and candy. Kevin was there. <laughs> and we just, he even invited Brian Dennehy, who lived in the area, wasn't even in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> to come, to come, you know? And uh, that was real loose. Contrary, nobody had go to the dailies in Rambo. Nobody. So it, it all depends on the director. It all depends on how loose it is and how much pressure he's under. And if he's got a lot of money and a lot of extra money in the contingency to band-aid things that when I say banded, I mean fix things that aren't recorded well or reshoots and things like that. So it all depends pretty much on your budget. Shut up, Nakapoko. How you must have suffered. 
It was rough. <laughs> but everybody gets sick. You know, I got sick the last three days. Everybody gets sick in, you know, Mexico, you know. But uh, it was a very interesting time, you know, having back-to-back, -back, those two successes back-to-back. -back and, and uh, you know, just really seeing the action characters that I was doing and yet doing something like Cagney and Lacey where I was really just on the periphery a lot. You know, I was mm -hmm. a comic relief. So it was two totally different things, and, uh, but very, very satisfying. Well, it, the, the, the actor needs to be consistent, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and it's very difficult. The most difficult thing, I think, is shooting around the table, and you're eating. And whenever any of you have an eating scene, morsels. Don't get involved eating all, <laughs> all the meatballs, all the spaghetti because the camera will come around to you and if you don't remember, by the time it comes around to you, it's shot everybody else. So if you don't know on what line you picked up the meatball, on what line you touched the fork, you've got a continuity problem. And it's, it's, it's terrible. You really need to know what you're doing and keep it as simple as you can because you don't know what someone will throw at you. You don't really know all of a sudden uh, you're going to have to get up for an unnecessary reason, contrary to what you plan to do. So you've got to make all your movements very simple prior to having to get up because the director sees you getting up at a certain moment and you really didn't do that and didn't plan on doing that. So you've got to make these adjustments. The, uh, there's always a girl with a script that'll tell you when you picked up the cigar, when you held it, um, and what line you said when you put the cigar in your mouth and put it down. Uh, there's a continuity girl that will help you with that. But it's really your job to stay with it because you, it, they'll cut away from you and you won't get the camera time if you're not in sync with the master, the scene. And you don't know when they're going to cut back, the master being the big shot back here of the entire class sitting here. And then if you are sitting with your legs crossed and all of a sudden you decide to uncross your legs, you better remember when you spoke what line you uncrust your legs because otherwise the camera will never come over to you on the close-up it'll stay on someone else and so you really need to protect yourself and be very conscious of your movements at all times you know especially if you're smoking or you're picking up a cup or drinking uh -huh. a glass of wine or whatever walking around is easy I and mean, you can remember the big movements but it's the finite movements that are often very interesting you know even just putting your head down and saying your line looking down, and you don't remember doing that, so all of a sudden you say your line up here, it's not as interesting as your first inclination in the master when you just went down there and said it. And so it doesn't look as good, he may cut away from you. So always be aware of what you've done in scenes, especially finite moves, the toughest role. Well, I did a film called Steel Justice years ago. And it was a poor man's Rambo. I did it a couple of years after Rambo. And I had to, um, <clears throat> I went down to a, um, he was a Vietnam vet, and I read a lot of books and all that. And the good part about it was I, I was doing a, a tennis tournament in Indonesia, and I would go to Bali. And we play, we're in Singapore, Bali, Hong Kong, and I would go into the jungles, and I would live in the jungle for a day or two just to get a sense of that. And I was in the Balinese jungle for a couple of days, and it was really wonderful. But then when I got back to the States, I had to work with um, a, a group that trained, they trained mercenaries and they trained soldiers and I had to crawl with the